Hello. Uh, it's been a little while. Sorry for uh, any delays. Today we're going to be talking about compiling plugins and solving errors. Um, something that a lot of people struggle with is how to... They'll, they'll write some code and they'll struggle to find the source of their errors. And being able to read what the compiler is telling you and interpret that in ways that are easier to understand is a skill. And it's not a skill that seems obvious. It's, it's not, it, it's, it's a skill that has to be practiced. And sometimes the compiler will say things that may not seem obvious until you kind of learn the language of the compiler. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about finding the source of your programming errors and so anyway back to what i was saying earlier uh, i was browsing the the forums and i came across someone who was struggling to compile this plugin and i figured that would be a great video idea so here we are this is the exact plugin that he was using um and this is the exact thing he was struggling with, and we're gonna go through it step by step to kind of just show you some of the errors. Now, to me, looking at this, uh, most of the errors seem quite obvious, but I can completely understand how these errors could happen. Uh, and mainly what it results, ma mainly what the source of it is, are just little typos, little things that you think aren't important, but to a compiler completely change. Uh, it, the compiler completely can't understand. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and dive right in. So when we first compile it, we're getting this error. Fatal error 183 cannot read file from score mod. So, so, so source mod is misspelled here, right? Totally reasonable error. So we can go ahead and include source mod. Whoops. There we go. So now we have fixed this error. So source mod. And if we try to compile it now, we are getting some more errors. Uh, if you see a stack of errors like this, where they're all on the same line, or even regardless, if, if there are errors below this, you do not care about any of the errors other than the first one. The first one w is going to be the error that you actually are running into. If you st if you try to solve the error from the bottom, it it, it could be it, it could be completely inaccurate. So let's go let's go for the first one. So line seven error one o seven cannot call methods on a function. All right, so let's go to line seven cannot call methods on a function. So the error here is that there's a period instead of a comma. Uh, this error, the reason why it's saying cannot call methods on a function is because vi command VIP is a function, right? It's a function, it's declared here. When you have, uh, when you have some data types, like let's say you have a data pack, equal new data pack, right? If we wanted to call p dot like push push cell, I think is a is a valid function, um, or or you know if you wanted to call any 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 function, it, it could be anything function name. We're gonna call it that. If if function name existed, it's trying to call that function which belongs to a data pack, right? So this 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 error here exists because it's trying to call a function that from a command VIP, when a command VIP is a function itself, right? It doesn't make sense. It's not a data type. It doesn't have a function. It is a function. So, so, this, so th th that's the source of this error. So we'll go ahead and put a comma here and we'll recompile, do this process again and again. No method map or class was found for menu. So this is jumping out at me because menu, the M is lowercase. So if we look at line 11, Let's see, line 11, we have a lowercase m for menu. When the type is menu, you have to use capital M because according to the compiler, lowercase m and uppercase m are two completely different things. They are, they, 
they are completely different. The compiler knows what a capital M menu is, but has no idea what a lowercase m menu is. So we need to make sure that that's uppercase. Go ahead and hit compile again. Er, line 12, unexpe or sorry, expected token semicolon, but found identifier. So let's go to that line. All right, so on that same line, he, or the, this programmer forgot to put a semicolon at the end of the line. That one seems obvious, but what a lot of people get confused about is, but found identifier. <laughs> what is an identifier? An identifier is something, I guess it can be described as something that refers to something else. It, an, an identifier, for example, if we were to do int a equal to five, four, a would be an identifier. And uh, it, it can be like a variable, it can be a few other things, but that identifier that it found, what the compiler did, it scanned this line, right? Didn't see the semicolon there because it didn't exist. I guess it was actually this line. Whoops. So it'll scan, reach the end of the line, not find a semicolon, and keep going, and then it finds menu. And it's like, oh, menu is not a semicolon. And that's where the error happens. So we'll put a semicolon there. Uh, this error wouldn't exist if pragma semicolon one wasn't there. So if I were to compile here, do you see how that error goes away? Now we have somewhere else that's pointing lower down in the code. But see how that error went away? It may be tempting sometimes to remove, to remove pragma semicolon one or pragma new decals required because you might get certain errors from them which might make your life a little difficult, but trust in the process, leave them in, and fix the underlying error, which is the semicolon being missing. So we'll go ahead, compile again. Error sit line 16, we have expected token semicolon, but found return. Right here, this is the exact same thing. So missing a semicolon, the compiler kept going, found return, and was like, that's not a semicolon, what's going on, and it exploded, so. We'll go ahead and compile again. Uh, undefined symbol return plugin handled. So th this is this is misspelled again. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And then line twenty five, we have loose indentation. This is a classic warning. This is a this is an awesome warning. So if you guys. Uh, you guys might not notice. I don't think I've ever talked about this in the past. Um, personally, I use tabs when I'm when I'm writing code. So in right here, there's a tab, and right here, there's a tab. You know, these are all these are all tabs to get you over to the to the right a little bit. Uh, if you're using tabs or you're using spaces, some editors might put spaces instead of tabs. It just all depends. Um, the the only important thing is that you stick to one. Uh, what loose indentation means is that if we go to line 25, we're going to see, yeah, see these spaces? So see, when I, when I click right here and I drag over, it'll just highlight everything to the left, right? If I do it over again, it'll highlight to the left. And if I do it from here, it, it starts highlighting these little spaces. So this person put spaces instead of tabs. So if we... If we delete this and put tabs again, now now that's gone. Now now we just have tabs. Now if we compile, the loose indentation warning's gone. And now we have line 25, expression has no effect. This, is, this error isn't great. Um, it doesn't really tell you exactly what the problem is. Um, the reason why it's saying expression has no effect is because... Uh, is because of this comma because when you use a comma like this it separates these two things into separate expressions um what the author really meant to do is call the get item function which belongs to the menu right but when you put a comma here menu gets evaluated into an expression and then get item gets evaluated into an expression and get item doesn't exist or I think, I think, honestly, the error might be on menu, since menu would have no effect. Um, but I don't know. That's the, I'm getting too deep into this. Basically, what we could do, we, that just means we need to put a, 
a period here. It means something's wrong, but it's pointing to it's pointing to the correct line, but it's saying something's wrong. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And we have compiled it. We still have a loose indentation warning on line 27. So let's go to line 27 and find our spaces. There we go. So this is this is space. So we'll just make that a tab again. And it looks like looks like this one is also spaces, so we'll make that one a tab. And we'll compile. We have no warnings, no issues, and this code is good to go. Um that's kind of all I wanted to talk about, just how to hunt down compilation errors. Uh, that's probably the best way to do it. If you guys liked the video, thumbs up. Tell me to make another one and I'll do it eventually. Um, uh, I really like being given specific topics to talk about. It makes it easier for me to, so I don't have to think about too much what, what to do. So feel free to leave a comment in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.